So in my practice, I started implementing uh, this, you know, encouraging people to reduce sugar. That evolved into where we are now, which is the concept of low-carb healthy fat or low-carb or keto when you go further down the track or carnivore if you want to go hard, really hardcore at it. But we, we know a lot more than we did 12, 15 years ago. I, I guarantee it. Like, so um, I came at it with, you know, literally imagine, you don't, well, don't, you don't need to imagine being married to me. You know, Belinda's put up with me for a long time. <clears throat> I picked up her mother today and I said, you know, she's, my wife's a very tough lady. She's been married to me for nearly 40 years. So I came home and said, Belinda, okay, we're getting rid of all the sugar in the house. She looked at me and, okay, that's it. My next step in that was I, when I started working out about the role of uh, glucose and the rest of the, or the carbohydrates, that it wasn't just sugar or it wasn't just fructose. It was glucose as well, and a lot of glucose is converted to fructose in the Western diet. So I said the carbs have got to go now. I was always saying. And then I said the seed oils. And that was where we worked out, you know, and I'm very proud to sort of be that, you know, I've got a timestamp somewhere in about 2012, 2013 that I described the combination of fructose, refined carbohydrate and seed oils creating an inflammatory model. And it was only a hypothesis and got me into a lot of trouble in the system, but nonetheless. So I then came home and said to Belinda, okay, we've got to get rid of all the seed oils out of it. And she said, because everything, I'd go into the pantry and I'd throw stuff out. So well, this is, can't eat this, we can't eat this, it's poison. And she looked at me one day and she said, if you take away the bacon, you're out. So luckily, bacon's on the agenda, right? So um, so that's, that's sort of the personal, and, uh, and there's a whole lot of science went with that, a whole lot of biochemistry. I, I became a mature age biochemistry student once again um, because in university, a, we're not talking, they're still not really taught about, about fructose metabolism, which is half of sugar, the other half being glucose. We know, we know a, a fair, we, in our textbooks, there's a fair amount about glucose, but there isn't much at all about insulin and the role of insulin, which then has a flow down effect on insulin resistance and a whole lot of metabolic disorders. So our textbooks, my textbooks certainly didn't have it. The current textbooks barely have it. And so you've got to grow and relearn it from current papers, current you know scientists in that field. So for me, there was a science backing up what I was reading and, and the anecdotal experience. I then started it with my surgical team. So I've, you know, I'm operating, I've got <clears throat> anaesthetists and assistants and uh, nursing staff. Those that adopted this were my, you know, they were my guinea pigs. Well, they, they voluntarily, started doing it because they'd seen me on this bandwagon everyone got healthier and then the no-brainer for me was to start taking that to my patients with diabetes and particularly my practice in northern tasmania for 20 plus years essentially meant looking after most of the diabetic foot complications in this northern half of the state and offering a diabetic foot service um, as much because everyone stepped back and i was left standing there like nobody wants to do it it's you know it's not well sorry it's perceived as not being rewarding. And literally, you know, my clinics where I used to see the occasional patient ended up just being filled with not just the general orthopedic patients, but these patients with diabetic foot problems. And we see them regularly, week in, week out, trying to salvage their, their toes, their feet. It, 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 you know, we, we talk about a tsunami of modern disease, and that's what we've got. And just if we look at the number of people with diabetes in the world today and the number with pre-diabetes and the people who are going to really, you know, develop it, <clears throat> if you go off craft insulin curves, which is, you know, a, a, we've got probably 80% of the world's population who are ready to move down that path of diabetes. 